my channel and welcome to another day of book miss. I don't want to say if it's like book miss day two or three or something because I honestly have no idea what order I'm going to post these videos in. So I'm just going to say welcome to another day of book miss. So I'm sure that'll be okay with you. Anyways, for today's video, I'm going to be talking about all the books that you can read to meet your Goodreads goal by the end of the year. So if you're interested in hearing about that, keep on watching. All right, guys, so before we start, I'm going to do the same disclaimer that I do in every single one of my videos, and that is if you hear my great didn't want to crying, she's not hurt, dang, or anything like that, she's absolutely fine, she's just dramatic, but here on this channel, we deal with it. <coughs> oh my gosh, it is so hot in here. You good? I don't know if you can see her. If you can't, Dahlia is on my lap. If you can, I'm pretty sure Dahlia is going to stay here for the whole video, so yeah. Um, but as you heard from the intro, I'm going to be talking about books that you can read to reach your Goodreads goal. I'm sure as readers, we've probably all been in this situation if you're a Goodreads user or even just in general, if you set reading goals for yourself every year where, you know, the end of the year is swiftly approaching and you haven't quite met that goal. I have a list of books here that are on the shorter side, but are still really, really amazing books to help you reach that goal without feeling like you've cheated by like, you know, reading a children's book that's 20 pages. So I feel like it's, it's nice to be able, and honestly, I'm an advocate for shorter books anyways, but it's nice to be able to get really good short books with substance so you still feel accomplished and like you've read something decent and that it helped boost your goodreads goal or just your reading goal in general in the process so the first book that i have on this list is animal farm by george orwell or conversely you could probably do 1984 as well because it's also shorter obviously I, I tried to have a variety of books and there are a lot of longer classics but in situations like this your 600 700 or an anachron in this case like damn near 1000 page classic is not going to help you in this situation so you're going to need to flex and find a little bit of a shorter classic george orwell's um animal farm is literally perfect for that and it's an amazing book it's one of my favorite books of all time so i would highly recommend that one the next book that i have is oh i think you're out of the frame now honey but that's fine you're just gonna chill here the next book that I have is Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. It's a YA contemporary following our main character who has a illness where she's pretty much like allergic to the entire world and she very much lives in a literal medically made house bubble um, and she's never really felt the need to kind of experience the outside world. You know she's safe in her house until um, she gets new neighbors, one of which is a boy her age whom she gets a crush on and then she kind of finds herself conflicted wanting to go outside and live her life to the fullest and experience new things with this boy or stay inside and stay alive. So that's quite the predicament that she's in. Um, I really enjoy Nicola Yoon's books because they are very quick reads. Like the entirety or pretty much the entirety of this book. Ow! Nails! Gosh, gotta clip your nails. And cat hair is now floating everywhere but yeah pretty much the entirety of this book is written in text messages um between the girl and the boy so a very quick read it's really sweet it's a lot of fun um like i said i thoroughly enjoyed it so i would definitely recommend that one for a quick read as well the next book that i have is actually kind of a genre i feel like most poetry books are really really good to read this time of year because they're super quick um, one of my favorite poets would be Amanda Loveless. She has to make monsters out of girls. Um, the prince, the witch doesn't die in this one. And something else to make monsters out of girls is definitely my favorite one by her. I want to get her entire um, thing of like literary works. I think that it comes in a box set. So I definitely want to get that. Um, but any of her books are really, really good. And then any book written, also written in verse will also be a very quick read. So you've got Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, which is so, so beautiful. It was almost my swiper for last year. Such a beautiful book. I thoroughly enjoyed that one. It's also a YA contemporary written in verse and you're following our main character. The whole book takes place literally within a 60 second elevator ride where our main character is deciding whether or not he is going to um take revenge on the people who killed his brother so he's literally going down the elevator with the gun in his pocket and he has to contemplate whether or not he's going to take revenge um and kind of continue the cycle of violence and then the next one would be the poet x by elizabeth acevedo is also written in verse and you kind of follow our main character who discovers her love of slam poetry 
and she's also kind of na trying to navigate her adolescent life where she's got kind of conflicting desires. She wants to kind of stray away from her very conservative family and kind of experience things a little bit more fully, but obviously it's hard when you've got really conservative parents. So you get to kind of follow, you get to follow her journey doing that as well. Another really nice, quick, but super fun, like absolutely hilarious read with still very deep meaning and a huge impact for me at least is Pride by Ibi Zobi. Again, another one of my favorite books. Very, very short. Um, if you listen to the audiobook version of it, it's a, it's narrated by Elizabeth Acevedo and it's absolutely amazing. So I would definitely what, what was it? It's um it's not a Pride and Prejudice retelling, it's a Pride and Prejudice remix. And that's all I'm gonna say for it because it is such a dope book and I highly recommend that you guys read it. Perfect for this time of year because it is very quick. Another book that you guys could give a try, or it's actually a little bit of a series, it's the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. Um, the, I haven't read the whole series, I've read the first two books in it, so Every Heart of Doorway and the Down Among the Sticks and Bones. Both of those books were absolutely amazing. So the series pretty much follows kids who come back from these fantastical worlds. I think the best way that I heard it be explained is um, if you found your door to Narnia, you stayed in Narnia for a little bit and came back, it's your experience coming back essentially. And those those kids get sent to this little boarding school type of place because you know their family thinks that they've gone crazy. They're saying that they've come back from like this fantastical world. So they get sent to this little boarding school and a lot of them are trying to figure out what either how to live in this world versus their fantastical one or how to get back to their fantastical world. It's a very, very intricate series and so well done. I think Down Among the Sticks and Bones is my favorite one so far. Um, I definitely want to continue with the series, but each book again is around 200 or less than 200 pages and it's so, so, so good. Like I would highly recommend if you are trying to boost your Goodreads goal, definitely go for Shauna McGuire's Wayward Children series. It is absolutely amazing. Another YA contemporary that you could look into is I've Lost My Way by Gail Foreman. I actually have never really been a Gail Foreman fan. I've never really been able to get into any of those books, but I picked up I've Lost My Way literally on a whim. It was the first book on my desk and I absolutely adored it. It was written so, so beautifully and it's pretty much what happens to these five strangers when they quite literally all collide one day and each have an impact on each other's life. Um, I thought I'd have to have like an incredible suspension of disbelief for this book but I really it really wasn't that bad in that sense so and again very quick I think I read it in maybe like two or three hours and I'm a very slow reader so I would highly recommend that one as well it was done very very well the next book that I have is Ghost Boys and oh my gosh I can't remember the author but I have a full review on that book on my channel so I will also link that somewhere in the cards above or in the description box down below but Ghost Boys is it's a little oh that's not a little it's extremely heartbreaking it's a really really hard read but it's very quick it is a um it's not children's it's what is it I think it's like 9 to 12 something along those lines but um it follows it's an interesting take because I feel like you get a lot of books that follow um the events leading up to a young black man being killed by a police officer for something he didn't do but ghost boys kind of twists that and you get to follow the events after the young black man is killed for something um that he really he really didn't he didn't do anything and it you get to see what happened before how it happened but then you're also following the main character as a ghost this book broke my heart um so be prepared if you didn't want a heavy read then i wouldn't go with this one but it's still really really impactful and i absolutely adored it it was done beautifully so definitely give that one a look if you haven't if you haven't had it on your radar i would definitely give that one a try as well and the last book that I have is also a children's book, and that is Matilda. Um, why can't I remember the author for this? I'm horrible. 
but again I will have it somewhere on the screen I absolutely adore Matilda um, I'm pretty sure we all know what Matilda is about it's literally a children's classic it's oh it's by Roald Dahl of course duh um, and you could also do Charlie and the Chocolate Factory obviously they're children's reads so they're gonna be super quick they're still really really fun and just filled with nostalgia so definitely recommend either Matilda or the Charlie or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory as well and that brings us to the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and were able to maybe hear one or two books that you think that you could throw into your uh tbr for december to help really boost your good reads goal or just your reading goal in general um i think it's really awesome to set good reads goals i know not not everybody is a huge fan of it but i feel like setting reading goals um really just helps me stay motivated and you know kind of i it doesn't help me completely avoid reading slumps but it helps me to a degree because you're working towards that goal so i'm hoping that this list will help at least some of you or that you were able to pick something out of it and enjoy um but yeah that's it for this video and i will see you guys tomorrow don't forget to like comment and subscribe before you go leave questions down below for my pre-filmed q a and yeah i will see you in the next one bye